go. Really, man? I'm not a happy camper right now, dude. I mean, I can see why, but at the same time, Chris told you that you have to be festive. Look, I'm covering snow. How much more festive could you get? Besides a reindeer nose? Um, I don't know, but you signed the contract. Not me. Anyway, you saw snow at the beginning. I'm sure it looked really pretty, so let's talk about it. Yeah, I guess. But you could have more enthusiasm. You shut your least. filthy mouth! Now, once you've downloaded the snow effect from Footage Crate, the first thing you're probably going to notice is it's not very long. In fact, it's only about five seconds. Now I know what you're thinking. How could I possibly use this for a clip that exceeds five seconds? Well, here's how. Start by opening the effect and then marking the in and out points a few frames into the beginning and a few frames before the end. Don't worry, it'll make sense in a second. Then, after you've put it in your timeline, make sure that it fits the frame. In my case, I gotta crank it up to about 150. After that, we're gonna hold the Alt key and drag copies of this effect into the timeline. I'm gonna do this until I have about 20 seconds of snow. When you play it back, it's gonna be easy to notice when each clip starts up. So here are a couple things you can do to make it a little more seamless. First, add a fade transition between each clip. Trim each transition down to just a couple of frames so it's a little less obvious. So if you play that back, you'll notice that it's a little less jarring when we go from one piece to the other. Still, after about three or four times, the eye figures out that it's pretty much the same thing over and over again. To fix this, we're going to go into the settings of each individual clip and then just mess with it so each one's different from the other. So you can mess with the scale, the position, even the rotation if you want to. Just make sure you avoid the edges of the effect, otherwise it'll become obvious that it's just an overlay. Another thing I like to do is grab the horizontal flip effect, just so we can give everything a bit more variety. So now we've gone from a 5 second clip to a 20 second clip, which will give us a little more flexibility for when we're working on a scene. Of course, even after all of our changes that we've applied, you can still kind of tell when it goes from clip to clip. And while I can promise you that it'll look better when you've actually laid it over some footage, there's still one more thing I want to show you that'll give it a major boost in the end. Once everything's to your liking, select all of the clips at once, hold the Alt key, and drag duplicates to the next layer. After that, select this new batch and drag it just a few frames over to the right. Add a brief fade to that first clip just to smoothen everything out, and then take a look at what you've got. Right away you'll notice the snowfall is a lot thicker, but by offsetting this new layer over top the original one, the transitions from clip to clip are a lot less noticeable. Now to finish everything up, I'm going to select this new layer one more time and add the horizontal flip. So after this, you have a pretty good idea of what you can do with these 5 seconds of footage. So just like previous tutorials, I'm going to invite you guys to customize it to suit the needs of your particular project. So obviously we're going to want to see this thing in action, so it's only fitting that we lay it over some footage that I shot beforehand. Now before I go any farther, I'd like to point out the fact that this is a lot of stuff to work with. Up until recently, if I was working with a lot of footage and I had like a bunch of different intricacies in the same video, I would just edit everything chunk by chunk and then export them as their own high resolution video files. And then after that I'd re-import them all into the same project. And don't get me wrong, it got the job done, but it added a bunch of extra steps to something that should be, for the most part, intuitive. So for this, I'm going to whip out a move that I picked up recently from Chris Kelly of FootageCrate.com, and I'm going to select all of these elements, right-click, and select a very overlooked option called Nest. See what happened there? Nesting is a very helpful time saver, because it allows you to select a bunch of different clips, even ones that have mountains of effects and alterations laid from your effects menu, and combines them into one clip that you can overlay into another sequence. Speaking of which, I'm going to open up the sequence for the part of the video you've already seen, the intro. You'll notice that a tab opened up for this one, so now I can go back and forth if I want to. But looking back at the intro, you'll see several green bars that represent a nested sequence that has been overlaid to other parts of the video. So now you can see all of my titles and footage thrown together with this beautiful flurry of snow, all without having to export our newly customized snow effect. So rather than doing everything in the same sequence, which again, I did a lot up until recently, we can break up our project into sections that are a little easier to manage. Dude, what are you doing? I look like I'm doing. You can't take that off. No, obviously I can't. Actually, it's stuck. It's hot, it's itchy, and it's stuck to me. Well, good. I mean, you have a contract anyway. Well, so where I mean, the contract? You don't gotta, you don't, you don't gotta keep reminding me. It looks good on you, dude. I mean, besides, it has red. It's got the, the ugly, ugly sweater thing going on. 
you, you just radiate the Christmas spirit right now. Just absolutely radiate, and it shines right through that vest. I don't appreciate your sarcasm right now. Even though I showed you how to extend and enhance the original five second clip, there's still a few things we have to do to make it a little more realistic. To do this, I've made a stripped down copy of the title sequence. No titles or fades or anything, just a simple sequence where one shot cuts directly to the other. So I'm gonna take our nested sequence from earlier and lay it over our footage. Since all it is is an effect shot, we don't need the audio part. So obviously our snow has made it into the picture, but if you look carefully, there's a couple things that take away from the effect. For one thing, it could be a little brighter. This is supposed to be snow, not the ashes of Mordor. So let's break out our brightness and contrast tools so we can remedy that. Play with the settings here till we get what we need. If you're still having issues with the brightness, another thing you can try is going to blend mode under opacity and selecting screen. This is something that a lot of people use for muzzle flares and other explosive, bright type of elements and essentially smoothens out the relationship between the effect and the background. In other words, it's just another little trick you can do to make it a little more realistic. There, much better. So, we done now? Not quite. Cutting from one shot to the other reveals that we only put one file over top of the footage. So what we're gonna do is go over to each cut with the splice tool, and then we're gonna mess with the scaling and position to make them distinct from each other. Don't hesitate to bring out our old friend Horizontal Flip. In hindsight, I should have made a longer snow clip, but we can easily fix that by just dragging this part over here and filling in the remaining empty space. So there you have it. We've broken up the flow of the original clip so that each cut to a new shot is nice and natural. Now the last thing I'd like to show you involves this final piece, which is actually a photo that I animated using keyframes as to make it look like video. Now, if you haven't seen our last tutorial on animating with keyframes, I strongly recommend checking that out first, just to understand what I'm about to do. Anyway, as you can see in the effects controls, I've already mapped out keyframes for this photo of where the position and scaling should start and end, which essentially maps out the motion that it goes through in the video. The overall footage looks okay, but the snow doesn't really seem to be reacting to the imaginary camera like it should be. In other words, the closer to the house we get, the closer the snow should get to the viewer. So I'm gonna select the snow layer, go into its effects controls, and toggle the animation on for position and scale. I'm gonna take these two keyframes and put them at the very beginning, and then I'm gonna move forward a bit just to get an idea of where I'm gonna end up. As described before, we're gonna scale it up so that it gets closer to the camera. Keep in mind we're also going right, so we also want the snow to go left to create a parallax in the image. And it wouldn't hurt to bring it up a little bit since we are going down just a touch. Once it's to my liking, I'll select these two keyframes and put them at the very end. So there, by making the snow a bit more dynamic, it complements the camera movement and creates the illusion that the snow is actually there. As I hinted at in the previous tutorial, keyframes don't just apply to motion. They can also be used for effects like blurriness and sharpness. You get the idea. In this case, I added a Gaussian blur to the house so I can simulate pulling focus in the camera. I marked off where in the timeline I wanted it to be blurry. These first two keyframes have no movement whatsoever. After this point though, I added another keyframe telling it to go all the way down to zero by the time it gets to this point. So if you look at the preview, it gradually gets sharper, which again, simulates camera focus. As you might have predicted, we're gonna make changes to the snow so it'll also complement this effect. So while we've still got the house photo selected, we're gonna find the spot on the timeline where I tell it to shift focus. Then we're gonna go back to the nested sequence, add a Gaussian blur, and toggle the animation on. Please note that everything before this keyframe will stay sharp, so you don't necessarily have to create an additional one at the beginning. And then like before, we're gonna move over a couple of frames and figure out just how blurry we want the snow to be by the time the scene ends. After I've gotten that figured out, I'm gonna go to where the house starts to sharpen up and then move that second keyframe to that spot. Look back on the footage and you'll see that we've pretty much completed the illusion that we're pulling focus from the snow to the house. Of course, it's probably going to take some fine adjusting before everything's perfect. So, there you have it. We went from a 5 second clip that you download off of footagecrate.com to something that's a lot more dynamic and flexible to the footage you're working with. Again, by playing with different effects in your editor and combining different layers of the same effect, you can create some pretty cool stuff. Well guys, it just about wraps everything up. If you want to take your snow effects to the next level, there's actually a HD bundle currently available for purchase from Footage Crate. There's a button you can click on the file download page for the one we've used in this tutorial, but it's also available on the HD products page. There's a dozen other packs to choose from, including explosions, blood, and dust particles. So if you want to up the production value on your effects videos, go ahead and check those out. Of course, if you've got 39 bucks to spend, you can also get a year of pro membership, which gives you access to the whole shebang and grants you a thousand downloads per day. 
We're pretty proud of the free stuff that we offer you guys through Footage Crate and Sounds Crate, so anything made off of these packs will go towards keeping that stuff free, as well as developing new sounds and effects for you guys to use in your videos. Anyway, thanks for listening to this extra long tutorial. We hope you all have a wonderful holiday with your friends and family. Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, Happy Kwanzaa, whatever you guys celebrate, we hope you have the best one possible. So, till next time, peace. Done. We're done. Dude, no, you're not. You don't know how, how that friggin' feels. It's hot. It's, it's sweaty. Doesn't it matter. Do you know how much this costs? You know, like five dollars. Really? That's how much your contract costs? Give this crap off. No, I'm not gonna get away from. Get away from me! Oh, you s get your scrawny ass back here! Chris told you you had to be festive. I'm covering snow. How much more festive could you get? We covered snow. Yeah, and? <laughs> Not yet, though. We're covering snow in the very near future, like seconds from now. Oh, shut up. But you saw it at the beginning, and I can infer that you, th you thought to yourself, wow, that looks very elegant. I wish I had the knowledge to complete that kind of effect. I well, I'm about to make your... <laughs> you can't take that off. You have a freaking contract with this, gr with this dude. Ow! Let's try this again.